Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S episode number 11. Okay, the previous episode, uh, it was a Kana centric episode. Uh, Kana <laughs> ran away from home. He met a new friend. Uh, made, not made a new friend, but made friends with a, 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 an, a, another kid, a new friend she made. Uh, her name is Chloe. And you know, like she is like her first friend who is abroad. You know she's in america and because this is kana it's nothing for her she can just like you know pop in and out just like you're like you know visiting your neighbor <laughs> this is kana we're talking about she can just fly you know around and she might be able to bring chloe back in japan as well have a little fun and then drop her back like <laughs> it's easy for dragons like you know like there's no need to uh, for any long distance like you know thing like they can just go there on their own that's a good thing uh, she like, you know chloe kind of got kidnapped akana realized that yeah i should probably go back home and um you know, patch everything up with kobayashi he started feeling homesick most like you know the obviously because he like you know, like, you know she ran away from home before as well from our original home and came here so she kind of understands that a lot more and she helped chloe out and like you know chloe went back to her home kana came back to her home and that was the first section. The second section was also centered around Kanna, where we see Kobayashi and Kanna having, uh, you know, a day, a normal day, kind of hanging around, having a little walk, uh, eating little, I think, ice cream or buffet they ate. And uh, yeah, it was just a wholesome, nice slice of life episode. So that was the previous episode. So let's see what this episode brings. This is episode number 11 of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S. So without further ado, let's get started. I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here, sync it to whichever is your preference. And let's get started with this video. All right, so here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. This is radio calisthenics. No. Oh, God. You're not that old, Kobayashi. <laughs> Yeah, she always sits down and works, isn't she? Doesn't move much. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> oh my god. I wonder if there a day will come when Kobashi will actually eat <laughs> the wolf's tail. I don't know. I'm just thinking. Maybe, maybe someday. <clears throat> okay how many episodes does this ep season have i think 13 so two more episodes left after this i'm sure we're going to have another season in the future i'm not even sure how ahead the manga is so it took quite a while for season two to come out. I'm I'm guessing they were kind of waiting for the manga to go, like, you know, kind of progress, and that's like after it progressed significantly, they probably adapted the second season. So it might be something like that again for season three, maybe, or maybe we might get it quicker. I don't know. All right, let's see. Oh, they're in a... What the? Wow, there's a lot of... <coughs> Excuse me. Oh my god, maybe... Yeah, <laughs> she bought everything. <laughs> I don't think so. What? Whoa, what the? <laughs> Um Ah <laughs> uh, Oh no, Toru. Oh yeah, she's not saying anything. 
but um what you think that now yeah what <laughs> yes no not <laughs> um ah uh, okay Yeah, it's a sitting job, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. True. I need to get a chair for myself as well. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Hmm. True. Yeah. A good chair is quite expensive. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Hmm. You think food of the dead? Oh. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know who Demophon is, but I know Persephone. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> she invited them here and <laughs> logic, yeah. Oh, she's a heightened. Yeah, she's kind of like the resident of this world in a way now. <laughs> He's doing it. Okay. Whoa. Mm. Oh. Oh, her tail is pretty huge. <laughs> yeah, she's a dragon, but... <laughs> it's like a cushion. Oh, she's vibrating it. <laughs> okay. Ah! <laughs> uh, don't think too much about that. <laughs> Premium seat, no extra charge. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, that'll work. Help. No. <laughs> what? What? The lines of coal. What? 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, who the hell is this? Who's the hell, who the hell is that person? Oh my god, is this the dad? Oh my god. I think it is the dad. It, oh, great. Eh! <laughs> okay. It just came to hang out, no need to worry. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Damn, the epic music. What the? Okay. Damn, look at these dragons. Whoa. But then they broke up, I think. Yeah. Like the harmony, the chaos faction, all these things. I yeah harmony faction and the spectator faction and there's also the chaos faction i guess yeah there you go oh is that toru oh my god it's cute uh oh my god that's to yeah toru <laughs> What? Yeah, what? Read the book from the future. It's, uh... Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Uh, yeah <laughs> anyways okay Whoa. Humans. Okay, so that's when. <laughs> oh my god, cute. Okay. <laughs> Look at Tori. <laughs> Tori is like. It's a bad thing. Ah, okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. 
lost control oh my god oh oh my god so is that how he got the she got the sword yeah she got the sword in her back or Hmm. Yeah, why suddenly go to the gods and tag? Oh, that's why. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and the extra things go like our story, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, true. Huh. Hmm. Ooh. <laughs> Convenient. <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> Okay, I guess. Oh, this world's God. Okay. So this, they also have ties with this world's God, I wonder. Okay. Mm. Okay. <laughs> mm, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, where did she learn this from? Oh, some other dragon. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it kind of looks like she's like in the spectator, like, you know, group. She only observes. Yeah, that's, I'm guessing after this, she met Elma. It's kind of the same looking thing that his dad, her dad said. Oh, Kanna! <laughs> Wait, dude. <it, it. laughs> so. Ah! True? Very true. Like, Frank. <laughs> oh my god. Previous <laughs> <But, laughs> uh, was 
Oh my god. Is that? Oh. Oh, this is Pursu Cotton? Yeah. Wow, she is. Hmm. Yes. She looks more like, as I said, the spectator faction. Hmm, that's why. Ah, oh, fuck me. Ah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then Elma, the fight between them. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Wait, what? Wait, who was that? Lack of freedom. Yeah, that's why he she went to the gods to fight. Wow. My god. Ooh. Ah. Hmm. <laughs> Come squash. I still don't understand how was she able to pull that off. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, she's happy with her life now. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, this episode we got quite a lot of um, information about Toru and not only Toru but like everything that was happening in the other world at that time. And yeah, like we haven't seen how uh, even saw how Kana was like you know not like you know how Kana was able to get her form. So all the dragons who have this um human form, they they know the magic of the transformation thing, which makes them be able to transform. Like I thought it was like this was like a thing like you know it was like an inherit inheritant thing for the dragons where all the dragons can transform into humans but it turns out no you need a specific spell which 
you need to learn unless and until you know that you won't be able to transform oh yeah that that also kind of explains how why toru is not not only toru but most of the dragons are unable to completely transform them like you know like toru has her tail um ilu has her hands which she cannot properly do anything kan also has her tail and the little horns you know okay now and i think and also another thing i think like you know like when fafni was saying that you you are becoming too much like humans i think like you know like small little parts which are not human parts for example as i said the horns toru's tail it's also kind of probably stop them from becoming completely human so like, you know like you still have something left as a dragon so i don't know like you know if it is something like that or yeah anyways um okay so this episode um okay the first part we see okay just a sec yeah the first part we see uh <laughs> kobayashi kind of get <laughs> getting back pains and you know she, her buying not weird but unusual and things that she probably won't even use and <laughs> she buy, buys them and never uses them and uh, yeah and it, it's kind of correct like you know if you have like a wrong posture all the time you you, you <laughs> your back will completely like you know be ruined uh, you need a proper chair that that means and If you like, you know, like most of the jobs are like desk desk jobs, you know, like nowadays, you know, in front of a computer, uh, all the time. So you need a proper chair, otherwise, ha, back problems is going to start, <laughs> you know, like it's going to start uh, very early, <laughs> like, <laughs> my God, okay, and um, yeah, so Toru, like you know, like he asks. co-workers that's elma and takia and like here we get to see like you know like we've always seen toru being so what do you call it mm, overbearing i think that's a pretty mm, what do you call it it's not extreme but pretty yeah kind of an extreme word to use here but she kind of like you know pushes her what do you call it the things that she wants to do kind of in a way overbearing and she she knows that she realizes that and that's why she started thinking that like, am i really bothering her by doing this you know like and all that stuff and takia also kind of like you know explains that uh this is like where is it here it is uh, when your emotions are heightened you can easily overstep so it's concerning yeah and like you know like all these things he gets to learn the perspective of the co-workers he he she actually realizes her own perspective and kobayashi as well but like you know i've, I've never thought of it like this before like it it kind of seems as if toru is overbearing and um you know like kobayashi kind of most of the times kind of denies stuff like you know for example when when she asks her to eat the tail she's like no i won't do that and obviously toru doesn't push that so in my opinion it's kind of fine you know like like a, a relationship like this is okay like you know you, like she's not forcing her to do something neither is kobayashi being forced to do something it's just like i don't know like some friendly banter <laughs> in my opinion so yeah it, it was nothing that concerning but obviously toru kind of felt a little bit concerned because you know she's the one who's kind of pushing these type of things on her a little bit so i think she kind of felt a little bit um what do you call it concerned about the situation but <clears throat> yeah by the end like she was she was able to get past that and goya she was like yeah like, <laughs> like you know like and 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 she kind of did it in a different way like you know she said that okay you know what like she asked goya she to kind of you know lay on her tail and she started vibrating it and uh, yeah she started looking at things more in kobayashi's perspective what will actually help her but she still kind of like you know jokes around with her tail and says that like yeah will you eat my tail 
<laughs> it still does that but that's fine in my opinion it's just like you know it's like friends and everything like it won't be a problem and uh, Kobesh also knows that you know like this is nothing too serious anyways okay so that was that and then the next portion which where we get quite a few amount of information um okay the first thing we get to know here is that the dad of uh sota's dad he uh, he and um toru's dad had a connection and now okay so toru's dad kind of explains everything in a very short summarized manner and says that the rest of the details you go to toru and ask her yourself and uh like in a way i think like you know like as as kobayashi said like uh toru's dad is a little bit strict in a way but he, he's still he's still reasonable you know he actually uh, respects the what do you call it decision that toru made and doesn't actually bug her or try to take her home forcefully he kind of he kind of tried to did, do that in the previous season but after seeing everything he was like okay fine you <laughs> be here you know i won't force you anymore and he kind of like you know respects that and like most probably but like you know the, the reason why he probably does that is because of his own connection with this world you know as he said like he has connections with the god of this world i'm guessing and also with sota's dad so he is more what can i say um uh you know like kind of i don't know like he's more f uh what's that word accepting he's more accepting towards you know like toru living in this world and he also knows kobayashi personally so yeah i think that's why he doesn't actually bother that much about anything that's happening here like i kind of thought like in the previous season after everything happened i kind of thought maybe later on the dad will again come try to bring her back again but nah he's he's cool with it i can see that and <laughs> you know so yeah okay so the tale that the dad says here is that so here we understand that there are not actually two uh, factions but kind of three factions the chaos faction the harmony faction and the spectator faction and everything started when the dragons waged a war against the god because they did not want to be controlled by the gods <clears throat> and obviously the names itself are very like you know easy enough to realize what fa faction does what chaos faction and the offensive tries to like you know you know i don't know like fight and everything like invoke chaos and they're more like the aggressive bunch i guess like you know they are more proactive in that manner um the spectator faction i'm guessing they just observes that's just them and the harmony faction they doesn't want anything to do with this you know so they're probably all peace loving people like you know dragons so now as according to toru's dad like they really did not bother with the other factions that much before but when the harmony factions started uh, like you know uh, interacting with the humans and again like you know humans started uh, <clears throat> what do you call them like started working with them like as we saw like you know in, in elma's like you know story where we see that the humans are worshiping her she's helping the humans and that's why the humans started stagnating you know their development kind of stopped everything the small little things they even they came to elva and asked for help but you know like it's like they're working together and that's when it started concerning them because you know like it, it's kind of concerning like if suddenly like uh, an, a faction other than yours started getting an ally like you know it's kind of a concerning thing so they thought that the dragons will be you know i don't know like their mindset and everything will be polluted by the humans and that's why where the i'm guessing the hate for humans starts coming because in a way they are kind of correct you know like there are a lot of different types of humans and like you know like as we saw in elma's story like it kind of you kind know, of became like that you know they started polluting the humans started polluting uh you know like started i don't know like kind of messing everything up and in a way you know involving the dragons in their petty matters and that's probably what kind of bothered the fact uh, chaos factions i guess and they started calling the humans evil and stuff like that and here we see a little toru <laughs> that, that was quite cute i have to say <laughs> a little toru kind of playing around 
and uh, and we also get to see that her name is actually from uh, author here Toru. So okay, anyways, okay. So here um, we see little Toru and uh, the dad also telling her and Toru asking her dad, "What are humans? How are they?" And the dad saying started saying stuff like they are bad, they are you know they're not good. You should not involve yourself with them. All that stuff and. <clears throat> okay so this is it and then little by little toru started uh, not toru but the dad started realizing that she he is actually burdening toru with her his own mindset like and, and you know like this is like a good thing that he did he actually asked toru to you know made toru free like said that go around live your life explore the world do what you can so that he does not burden her with his own perspective on everything. He wanted Toru him herself to learn what's happening and make decisions herself, which is definitely a good decision taken by him. Because if he actually continued in that direction that he was going, Toru would have probably brought up uh, being a dragon who actually really hated humans. And yeah thankfully that did not happen but in a way Toru still had like a negative impression on humans because everything that she saw after that you know like kind of made her think that yeah humans are not that good to be around they're selfish they wage wars unnecessarily all that stuff you know they're, they do pointless things and yeah like that was like that's like a little summary that the dad gave Kobayashi and then Kobayashi goes back and asks Toru herself and Toru gives her the more detailed version where we get to see how Toru was able to learn the transformation magic or spell and she started exploring looking at humans and then her contempt grow grew over the humans when he she saw excuse me that like she also had like the kind of like the same uh what do you call it uh, impression of humans just like her dad which she said that oh they are like funny people who make funny stuff now and then <laughs> humans but you know like waging wars unnecessarily fighting against each other these things probably kind of turned her off and she was like yeah these people are foolish they are yeah they, they, they're <clears throat> they're not that i don't know like good in a way so her impression worsened about the humans and here we also see Kanna now so like so I I, I always thought that Kanna like you know like stayed or lived with Toru from the, from birth or something like that so it's kind of incorrect that means so we can see here that they're in front of a beach where I'm guessing Kanna was in her dragon form and she asked Toru to help her learn the uh, spell the transformation spell and <laughs> oh my god Kano is so cute <laughs> okay and like you know like we get to <laughs> Kano's reason for becoming a human was also really funny she just wanted to do pranks and it kind of like you know makes us realize that like yeah this was most probably because her parents were not paying attention to her you know that's why she wanted to play pranks on them but unfortunately she was unable to do so because you know as she said like having human hands really helps with these pranks so she asked Toru to let her learn the transformation spell so that she can become a human and then prank her parents my god <laughs> but yeah like what else can you say you know like she's a little kid she like you know she if she doesn't get attention obviously she st she'll start doing mischief mischief so just so that people they cannot pay attention to her like that's what kids do you know yeah they play mischief just because they want you to uh interact with them in a way there are ex exceptions of, like obviously like there are always obviously exceptions where little kids actually do mischief for <laughs> weird reason but that's different like you know uh this type of mischief is something that she wanted to do just because she wanted attention on herself and you know all that things so Okay, one thing, one thing I, I was kind of interested here, just a sec. 
all right okay so one thing that toru says here we see the dragon behind kanna who kind of looks like kanna and toru says the previous kanna kamui so wait so does that this mean like the kanna is not actually her name but the name of the position or the rank they are in something like that because you know like as toru said the previous kanna kamui that means kanna kamui is not actually a name a personal name but it's like a name for a i don't know some kind of a position or something i think i think so at least <clears throat> okay um yeah she she just says it, like i want attention <clears throat> and they probably didn't have time with preparations for battle even though they usually only clash once every few centuries if all okay and then we meet quetzalcoatl and we can see that quetzalcoatl as he said did not like fighting at all i think she was like in a spectator faction and then fafnir who is just too extreme you know and it's kind of correct in a way because dragons are actually like this whichever you don't like you kind of take it for yourself that's basically dragons but he's a little bit too extreme but yeah and then we get to see elma the fight happens and like here we can see like so many pers like things that to sees here with her own eyes like so many experiences she has like that's why as, as, as i said like it was a good decision that the dad told her to live her own life you can see everything and made decisions on her own she met with so many different people kanna who just wanted attention you know who's lonely was a quarter who doesn't like fighting who wants to be at peace who wants a home um fafnir who just is very overly possessive of his own things and just like you know if you want something you get it that type of an extreme point of view elma whose perspective is really unique in a way and i think is most closest to a human where she actually says that uh you know after the fight uh elma says that you know what you said that the humans are actually making taking making use of me i know that but uh, okay what, what is what does she say at that moment just a sec um okay and maybe i have been getting used by others too but i don't think that's foolish prayers are precious which is why it felt so good to help humans like yeah in a way like you know as toru like in, a, in in the way if you look at it in a broader perspective and like you know it feels as if elma was getting used but they were also the humans were also giving stuff to her mainly prayers they prayed to her they worshiped her that in itself is an abstract thing so it seems as if they're not doing anything they're only making use of her but prayers in itself is a thing that they are actually providing her with you know even though it's like an abstract thing it doesn't exist and food as well like that's a different thing so in a way like like you know like elma kind of sees it in a more broader perspective she knows that the humans are using her but in a way she also like you know helps them knowing that that they are using her and she does help she helps them because she feel herself feels good about it she herself feels good uh, good feels good about everyone praying to her everyone giving her attention kind of worshiping her and you know giving her food that's something that she herself likes that's why in a way you can say that this is like an equivalent exchange in a way so like she herself has no problem with it so you know like yeah like that's what she said that you feel as if they're using me but actually they're not they're just praying to me they worship me that's something that they're giving me they're also giving me food so yeah that's why it felt good to help humans so they're not actually using her they are using elma in a way you know but at the same time elma also feels good by helping humans so that's something that she herself wants as well so you know like it's a good thing you know they are getting help from elma elma is helping them and getting some kind of satisfaction by doing this so there's no problem here as far as i can see so that's like elma's perspective and that's a very uh like that, that kind of makes us realize why she's in the harmony faction she is you know she kind of looks at it in this way in a peaceful way in a nice way so yeah so 
yeah and then like she, you know she says that we can't like hang around together anymore after this fight but i thank you for actually taking you know like spending so so much time of your life actually traveling with me you know i feel honored so yeah okay and then a thing happens which happens so quickly i was unable to actually see after this scene just a sec okay we see that toru is trying to stomp someone a kid or something yeah we see that she kind of stomps a place and there's this person here a girl i think i think we see saw this girl before didn't we i can't remember yeah one of the in the, one of the previous flash or something you know she, she's kind of like tucking herself and toru's nails are kind of on in, in her sides i think she kind of tried to stomp her not stomp her but try to frighten her or something but didn't hurt her something like that yeah we see that girl again and then we see toru in the water okay i'm sure we're going to get more explanations in the future uh what that little scene actually was they kind of kind of you know like fed through that portion kind of oh so, yeah i'm sure we'll get more answers but anyways um okay and then this like you know i'm I'm sure like the, the thing that happened after that probably triggered something in her and she realized that yeah like i can't take this anymore i need to stop this fighting going on and you know like you know i i want peace I didn't want the chaos faction, harmony faction to fight each other. That wasn't my will. It felt good having a friend so close we could fight. I respect my father, but the chains of being the emperor of Dem Demise's daughter are in the way. Yeah, like she's like, you know, like she she feels as if as we also see this before where she says that I cannot like I I cannot change my faction because I'm the Emperor of Demise's daughter. It will look poorly on him. So it's like a chains that are like, you know, binding her to that position where she doesn't want to be. So for that chain to break away, according to her, her own decision that she took after that was I need to stop this war. If this war ends, everything ends. And I won't be chained to the position of the Emperor of Demise's daughter. And I can do whatever the hell I want, go wherever the hell I want to. So that's why she became so desperate and decided to go and fight the gods herself. But yeah, these are the gods we're talking about. There's this huge, <laughs> huge person. I don't know who that was. Like holding a trident. Just a sec. Let me check the god out again. Um, I don't know. Like it looks like. Just a sec. Yeah, he's like <laughs> holding a trident. I don't know. It kind of looks like Poseidon or something. <laughs> you know, with the trident and all. But yeah, like, she messed with the god, and you know, this is a god we're talking about. Just <laughs> threw a sword, an energy beam, which transformed into a sword. It, you know, it hurt Toru. And yeah, she. I'm guessing after that, she came to the human world and met Kobayashi. And I always wonder how Kobashi was able to actually take the sword off. Like it's a huge sword. So I don't know. But yeah, like Kobashi helped her. And that's what everything was. And then she actually says here that I actually am more comfortable here and I know what I want to do. I want to be a maid. And you know, like after journeying so much, she was finally able to find a place where she can call a home and place where she was able to settle down. And uh, a job in a way which she can do in her own um by, you know, in her own with her own uh in her, what do you call it because she wants to do that she is not forced into that position she can do whatever but the hell she wants to and she wants to do this she wants to become a maid she wants to help kobayashi serve kobayashi so yeah so yeah that is how toru is here now and how she is content with everything so yeah that was a great episode so 
and we also get a lot of information about so many things i i, I really wonder I, w- I also want to get to see the backstories of kanna quetzalcoatl you know fafnir you look kind of saw i'm sure we're going to see more of her so all these characters as well i'm sure we're, they're going to show us everything little by little at least i'm sure they're going to show us kanna's backstory because she's kind of like the main character here as well so you know like i don't know probably quetzal quarter and uh, elma's story will also come later on i'm really quite interested in quetzal quarter's backstory because she seems such a what can i say like calm cool dragon so i wonder why she actually uh what happened to her before like all the things that in, involves her i want to know and elma as well like you know like why she started journeying why she decided to be in the harmony faction what was the motivation be- be- behind that all these stuff so and kanna as well you know like like what happened to her like you know she i we know that she played a trick on her parents i think or, or her dad and what happened as she kind of ran away here we need more details i am i think probably not in this season i don't think they're going to show us anything here probably in the future seasons we're going to see so yeah so yeah that was it guys thank you guys for watching this is my reaction to miss kobayashi's dragon maid episode number 11 uh, so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me you know i'll definitely check them out so yeah that's it guys so thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys next week with another episode of miss kobayashi's dragon maid so until then goodbye and have a nice day